All right, everybody, this is huge, huge news right now. Tiger Woods' plane has reportedly landed in Augusta. So he plans to scout Augusta National today to further like evaluate his body and his game on the tournament grounds. This is a big, big step in his efforts towards making a decision on whether or not he's going to play the Masters right. next week. First round, teeing off on Thursday. This isn't just like your typical little flat, beachy golf course. These are like mountainous hills. And for a dude who nearly lost his life a little more than a year ago, almost had his leg amputated, he's yeah. got to feel it. He's got to feel this out and see if his body can hang in there. Yeah, so we do have DraftKings contributor Jeff Ulrich here with us. He's going to comment on some of this. Uh, Jeff, Tiger reportedly exhausting every effort to play in the Masters, and as of today, still remains in the yes. field list for the event. He's plus 4,000 oh. on the DK Sportsbook to win it. Hot, you're crazy. Which, yeah, is like, seems like those are kind of short. Yeah, for yeah. Him. And like, what would happen if Tiger won this thing? Okay. I mean, what would if, happen is what? I'd, have to, oh, right. I'd have to get a tattoo. So we have a tweet yeah. from Jeff Ulrich. If Tiger Woods wins the Masters this year, I will get a tattoo of a tiger slapping a golden bear. Mm. So, Jeff. Um, I love this for you. First love this of journey. all, explain the tweet. Second of all, if, this, if Tiger Woods wins the Masters, we will pay for the tattoo, but we also get to pick the size. It's okay, gonna well, be. We'll, we'll negotiate the size after the show. No, there's no negotiating, buddy. There's no I'm negotiation. Good with paying for it. I'm also good with getting it if he wins, because I probably won't care at that point. Uh, it'll just be so amazing. But look, I'm clearly just trying to motivate Tiger Woods. So, um, you know, he's seen my tweet. He's flying down there now. He's going to do everything he can to win this thing. But uh, I mean, I just I don't really think that Tiger, even if he plays, has a chance. So that's kind of where the tweet comes from. And, you know, I, I really hope that in like four or five or, you know, sorry, not four or five days in over a week, Jesse. I, and Emerson, who's also there. I hope I look stupid, and I hope Tiger Woods does win the event. But, you know, plus 4,000, we're talking about it from a realistic standpoint. I mentioned this yesterday. I mean, you've got guys like Daniel Berger sitting there, uh, players who've been, you know, just all over leaderboards, all kind of uh, a fall here. I, I just don't think that, that he's live to win this event. But he's Tiger Woods. He won the U.S. Open on one leg. Um, if he wins, yep. it'll be fantastic, and, and I'll end up with a nice tattoo. So, I just size think it's, right. I yet th to be decided. It's yet to be decided. No, no, we will decide that at a yeah. later date. Um, but I do just think it's crazy that he's plus 4,000 on the DK Sportsbook. Shouldn't he be like plus 10,000? Yeah. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. And it just, what it speaks to is it speaks to the popularity of Tiger Woods. I mean, people, people want to get a, you know, regardless of what Tiger Woods' form is. Or if he even like like if he has a leg or, or any competitive practice, people will bet Tiger Woods. He's just the most popular golfer. There's nobody that moves the needle more than Tiger Woods, perhaps in any sport these days. So it, it speaks to his his overall popularity. He's going to be probably one of the most popular bets, even at plus four thousand. People just don't care when it comes to Tiger what number they're getting. They just want a piece of the action and. It's great. It's great for everyone involved. It's great for the DraftKings Sportsbook. They can put up more props and have more fun with it. And it's great for betters, too, who, who want to get a piece of the action. So he's just that type of player. He's that type of figure. That's why we're talking about his plane movement um, yeah. on the show today. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which we are tracking. Yeah, like no one talking about, like, Scotty Scheffler becoming, like, world number one <laughs> at all. Like, no, no, no. Who cares? It's, Everyone's like, Tiger's playing is touching yeah. down in Augusta. Love, love the, the golden bear part of the, the tattoo, too, because we all know, like, if he if – one more win, and he does tie Jack for most uh, wins yes. there at Augusta National. Right. Uh, that would be six. That's, Tiger currently has five. Yeah. Feel a little bad for the Valero Texas Open at it's TBC San Antonio. A bit. Like everyone's just jones it for the Masters like yeah. so much. This is a really good field though, like Jeff. And one trend, I can't remember if you tweeted out or someone else did, like seven of the last nine winners of the event before the Masters were won by guys who at the time did not have a Masters ticket like punch. So these are some motivated dudes trying to get to Augusta National. Wow. Start me out here though in the 10K plus range. Some big names here. Is there a guy you prefer over the others so yeah i mean th you're right just off the bat i mean like this is this is kind of an underrated event i think this is one of the better venues we get on the pj tour it's really tough tee to green test kind of like we saw at the valspar a couple weeks ago and um you know it has seen a lot of first time winners it's seen you know it's seen guys like jordan spieth um you know top more more like favorites in the field take it down too but from a dfs perspective roy mcelroy is going to be heavy chalk this week but i mean it's just for it's for good reason like 
I mean, this is this is a good setup for Rory. It's a tough ball strikers test. If you hit it long and straight here, you get a big advantage. You don't have to hit like those 200 yard iron shots in as much. And Rory's, you know, smashing the ball off the tee like he always does. His around the green game has been really solid. He's gained strokes around the green in eight straight starts now. And the iron game's picked up a little bit for him lately too. So if the putter shows up for Rory today, or this week, I should say, I mean, I, I think that he's, he's definitely going to have a very good shot of putting like a top five, especially given the weakness at the top of this field with all the top players skipping it. So I got to say Rory is, is the chalk I'm fine eating this week. If you're going to take a shot, I think Bryson at 10 two is just so intriguing because of the high birdie rate he makes. If he makes that weekend for you in GPP is going to be a lot lower owned and potentially will pay off, but he comes with a ton more risk just because of his lack of playing time. So, okay. all right, let's talk about guys in that nine K range. Who do you Ooh. like here, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, the 9K range is, it's kind of chalk with guys who just seem to be overvalued this week at the top, like Chris Kirk at 9,400, little ridiculous, Siwoo Kim at 9,600. I just don't want to pay those prices. But you've also got guys like Gary Woodland who's played quite well of late. Uh, you know, coming off a of T21, he was in contempt. Remember, he basically, he should have won the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I can't remember, if I, I was talking to Glass Sheen about this yesterday. Oh. You know, he basically gave a win to Scotty Scheffler at the Arnold Palmer. So this guy was in contention lately on another tough course. And then Tony Finau at 9,100. I mean, he's got bigger odds and, and is undervalued compared to these guys like Siwoo Kim and Chris Kirk. Like Tony Finau is a great fantasy golf producer. He's got great birdie rate. And at 9,100, just because he's missed a few cuts, you shouldn't write him off. So some good value there at the bottom end of the 9K range. All right. You know where we like to go from the 10K to 9K to the 8K range. Which oh, dude, I guess which, that's crazy. Which dude stands out to you here? I see Charlie Hoffman. Like this is a, this is a course, right? He's performed well on in the past. I mean, Charlie Hoffman is, is, you know, he's, I'm trying to think of something that runs. He's the, the valiant warrior of the Valero. I don't, that's not very good. What? I yeah. mean, he's, he's finished runner up here three times and he's won it once. I mean, it, it, like over the last eight years. I mean, he is, he is amazing at this course. He comes alive. He's going to be very popular. So is Russell Knox in the low 8K range. Both those guys, they're solid values. I think um, when you look at the players above them, again, you've got guys like List who's missed three cuts in a row. Davis Riley who's really, really good young player, but he's going to be a little bit volatile. So those guys offer a little bit of safety. I think Knox and Hoffman, I like getting up to Adam Hadwin in the 8K range. If you can really good long iron player, he's just got really good potential upside. And if you can fit in like a, a Woodland, Finau, Hadwin kind of stack. Maybe you're going to fade the top players this week, which I don't think is a bad strategy. You know, Hadwin is a guy you could certainly fit in with those guys. So I really like trying to get up to Hadwin here. He's playing really well. Again, good long iron player. I think he sets up well for this event. And look, I mean, a Canadian did win this event two years ago. So maybe Hadwin can uh, make it two out of three. Okay. Good All for right. you, man. Uh, we're going to combine the next two. So uh, 7K oh, wow. or under. So <laughs> so kind of combining you can't those do that tiers. To him. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> a guy you wrote up in your article, uh, David yeah. Lipsky, 6,900. Seven of eight cuts on the season coming off a T7 finish last week in Punta Cana. Wow. What do we think? He's playing TPC San Antonio for the first time this week. Oh, that's that's spooky. Yeah, it, I mean, it actually, it's a little bit. It's a little bit spooky. I mean, it's not it's not that big a deal. But Lipsky's played pretty well. He's a solid all around player. Um, I, I think let, let's start with the seven K range because I really like Doug Gim at seventy six hundred. This is a solid young player. He's, he's a very very good ball striker. One thing you really do need to do here, like I mentioned, the long iron play. You need to be a solid iron player, especially with those long irons. A lot of longer par threes. Doug Gim brings that. I mean, he he's very good in proximity. Just overall, I think he's fifth overall in this field in proximity. But he's good from the longer distances too. And I think Doug Gim is, is the type of player who could pop up here. Like we mentioned this, five of the last 10 winners have been first timers on the PGA Tour. Doug Gim has, has been, you know, he's T6 at the, at, the, at the players. I mean, he's coming in with confidence. Like we've seen this with players in the past too. Kevin Chappell came up off a top 10 in 2017 at the Masters to win the Valero. Doug Gim kind of coming off a similar performance. I really like him at 7,600. Down below, you mentioned Lipsky. I think Lipsky is like a safe cash game option. My guy Danny Lee down there at 6,800, I think is a, is a good GPP option. Going to be very low, and he's played he's played pretty well. He likes tough courses too. And then down at 6,300, Brandon Hagee is a guy a, a punt play. I don't mind. He he's you know T21 at the Valspar again, another tough course. Made the cut last week. Brandon Hagee hits the ball a ton, and uh, he can get hot with the putter. So I like him as a punt play this week. Ten seconds or less, who wins this week? Tony Finau. No. I'm not picking Tony Finau just because uh, it, I don't want to give Reed the satisfaction. I'm going to say Doug Gim. I'm going to go off the board a little bit. This is an event that's seen a lot of first-time winners, 
a lot of big, uh, you know, odds winner. We had Andrew Landry. Corey Connors was like 150 to 1 when he won here. I think Doug Gim um, is, is a good long shot to target this week.